going on, everyone? So the New Orleans Pelicans pulled off a huge win against the Milwaukee Bucks yesterday, uh, staying in that race for that 4-5. Right now, the New Orleans Pelicans are trying to, who's going to get that home court in that 4-5 matchup? More likely than not, it's going to be the Pelicans and Clippers regardless. But it would be nice to have home court in that potential matchup. Uh, now, technically, you have a couple teams that are still in the race. Right, The Dallas Mavericks could, they're only like two games out of overtaking the New Orleans Pelicans. So the Pelicans definitely need to kind of keep that pace. They need to kind of stay in front, continue to win games. There was a little concern. There was a little bit of like, oh, what's going to happen when Brandon Ingram went down? Uh, because it was like, hey, you know, Pelicans, they're hitting their stride. We've seen this for several seasons even where it's like they look like one of the top teams in the league. They look like a team that can really make some noise and be a threat come the playoffs. Zion goes down, or Brandon Ingram goes down, or both go down, even C.J. McCollum. And they've even had guys kind of going in and out of the lineup all season. But it was really nice to see that this team didn't really cave. Right? They've been very good even without Brandon Ingram and have been able to rattle off some games. They lost, I believe, two games since then, but they've been able to win some of these big games and including this Milwaukee Bucks game. But Zion Williamson, this guy, I don't think I've ever seen a player make Giannis look like a kid. Like, he was bullying Giannis, bullying Brooke Lopez at the same time. They were literally building a wall. And he was just like, I'm just going to run through. And just, roll. I mean, talk about bully ball. Just that bruiser ball. Right? Giannis usually is the guy that's initiating contact, banging in the guys. Right? Teams are trying to build a wall to slow him down, and he's just kind of pile driving through it. There are very few people that can throw around Giannis the way that Zion was. And, I mean, he was dominating that matchup. Dominating. Look, Giannis is Giannis. But Zion is just hes so rare, so special. We've never seen, in my opinion, a guy like this. We've seen bruisers, right? You know, a guy like a Zach Randolph or even like a Charles Barkley or something like that, right? LeBron James and, and his athleticism with his size and his ability to kind of just bully guys, kind of move guys out of the way, especially in his prime when he had a head of steam and was a freight train, like good luck, right? But – to see that balance of just freight train, physicality, bruiser, and the athleticism, right? Like, imagine if, like, Charles Barkley or Zach Randolph had LeBron-esque athleticism. I mean, that, that's basically what you get with Zion. And Zion has the potential to just be so incredibly special. I mean, he was unlike anything we've ever seen. He was honestly the most hype prospect we've had since, like, LeBron James. He was a guy that was really expected to come in and just take the league by storm. And in many ways he did. The problem is, is he just hasn't been able to stay healthy because when he does play, the guy is ridiculous. I mean, like you look at the stats against the Milwaukee Bucks, for example, because that's the game that we're highlighting here. I mean, he had 28 points on 15 attempts. He was nine of 15 from the field, five rebounds, two assists. He was 10 of 16 from the foul line, which that was a little surprising because he's been shooting like 80% from the foul line. He, uh, I mean, talking, he would have had another six points. He would have had another 34 points if he made his free throws. But his ability to just be so explosive, right? On the defensive side of things, he, his ability to block shots and be like a help defender, blindside defender, right? He, he doesn't get pushed and bullied around. He's just so big and got a good lower center of gravity. I mean, this is a guy that if he can stay the course, if he can stay healthy, if he can stay on the basketball court, right? He still has top five in the league potential, like genuinely. It's just, can he? Can he put together multiple full seasons? Before it was like, can he put together a full season? Can he put together a season in which he plays, you know, 65, 70 games? And so far, he's done a really good job. And he's still incredibly young. He's only 23 years old. So you're not talking about a guy that's 30. He still has a long way to go. He still has another four or five years before he even enters prime. Once he starts to really, one, get and stay healthy, but two, 
really start grasping and having a real feel and understanding of the game. It's something I talk, I talk about heavily with these young guys, right? A lot of these guys, even Zion, he's just playing on raw talent, raw physical traits, right? Raw athleticism. Once he really learns how to properly navigate uh, opposing defensive sets and, you know, how to properly get what he needs without having to just like kind of bully people at times and just run people over, how to really position himself and, and utilize his strengths and his bodies and his body to his advantage more so than he already does, which is just him naturally. This dude is it's going to be a handful. I mean, an absolute handful. But if you look at, say, this season, right, this season he's played 61 games, which is tied for the most games he's played uh, since his second year, right? So he played 24 games his rookie year. He played 61 games his second year, did not play with the foot injury. Uh, then last year he played 29 games, and now once again 61 games. If he can play around 61 games a season, that would be huge given you know, the circumstances of his career thus far. But this season, he's averaging just a hair under 23 points, giving you six rebounds, five assists, one steal, one block. Um, he's shooting uh, from the field 70%. Uh, he's shooting EFG of 58.8. He has two-point percentage of 59%, so almost 60%. And even from three-point range, he's shooting 36%, but he rarely takes threes. It's a small sample size. But this is a guy for his career – that came in and was a 27, 26 point a game guy. I mean, his rookie year, he was averaging nearly 20 points. It's a guy that could go get you easily, in my opinion, 30 points, maybe seven rebounds, five assists, and, you know, one and a half steals, one and a half blocks, right? Especially once he really gets a feel and understanding of the game, once he gets a little more self control. Um, you know, the, the big problem and the big question mark with Zion is the seriousness when it comes to what is necessary for the game of basketball, right? There's a lot of questions of just like, is he committed enough to really elevate himself to that level? Like, can he keep his weight down? Can he do the, the exercises and put in the time and the effort and the energy and diet and do all the stuff that he needs to do in order to be great. Now, there's a lot of questions of like, well, you got the bag, now what, right? And Pelicans are putting all these clauses in his contract and all this stuff just to like try to give some level of like motivation to Zion, but also to give them a, a break glass in case of emergency type situation. And it's like, there's no question of Zion's talent. There's no question of like what this guy can bring to the table and what he can provide and, and him being a, just a dominant force when he is on the basketball court. That's the problem, him staying on the basketball court. If he can take it serious, this guy, I mean, with his tools, his physicality and his skill set, and if he can develop and can keep, you know, every year adding to his back, Again, he's 23 years old, 23, like not 33, 23. So if in the next five years, like I said, maybe develop a nice little consistent three-point shot. I'm not saying he has to be elite. Just call it like 37, 38%. He's around 35, 36%, but very few attempts. Let's say he can do that on you know, three attempts per game. Because you want Zion as close to the basket as possible with his physical traits but it would be nice if he could stretch just on occasion not asking him to take eight threes let's say you know two to three a game he could be 38 percent from three-point range you know he already has the passing ability already has the jumping ability already has the, the physical tools to get into the chest to get to the basket but if he can develop you know kind of a little elbow better a little mid-range better kind of get more comfortable be able to not only just take guys off the dribble with his explosiveness but just you know kind of work on his all-around game you know each year Again, slow build. Not saying he has to overnight do all this. No, just slow build. You know, next year he adds this, the following year he adds this, the following year he adds this. And five years from now, you could tell me he is by far the best player in the league. Over Wimby, over everybody. I'd believe. Again, he has that talent. He has that skill set. If I had to bet on it, 
It's not gonna happen, right? I, I, and it's not even him staying healthy. I just, I don't think, and again, it, 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 I hate to say stuff like this because he is so young and he is so talented. And I want to see players. I am a real fan of greatness. I say it all the time with, you know, LeBron and, you know, uh, KD and Steph and all these guys, right? Like, whether you love them or hate them, appreciate it while you have it. I'm not going to be here forever. You're seeing generational talent, right? Enjoy it, right? Enjoy it. So I want Zion to be, I'd love if Zion became the far and away the greatest player to ever play the game. I'd love it, right? Because I would get to experience that. I would get the joy of watching that progress. I just, again, he just doesn't seem to have the, that killer trait. He doesn't seem to have that, like, I want to be the greatest trait. Now, you look at somebody like an Anthony Edwards. He wants it, right? And he Every year, he just gets a little better, a little better, a little better. And he's still incredible. He's like 22, right? Like, Anthony Edwards is my, by far my favorite player to watch. I love watching that guy. And Zion would be up there for me if he just had that in him where he's like, I, I want to be great. Because if he did, good luck. Sky's the limit for that kid. But the problem is I just don't think he has that, that burning desire in him. I hope I'm wrong. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Ask a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, do you agree? Do you think, like, yeah, it's unfortunate, but Zion just doesn't have that? Do you think, no, like he does? He just got to kind of get his mind and his body right. Um, what did you think of Zion's performance? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.